Thanks for tuning in to the special edition of the Rent Show Report. Mario the I, reporting from the city too tough to die in New London. We've got municipal elections coming up in, uh, let's see, uh, September, October, three months. Barely, yeah. And one interesting race, uh, probably the only interesting race we have because uh, Mike Passwell is a shoe in uh, Waterford is running unopposed. Mm -hmm. But East Lyme has two quality candidates running. One is with me today, Ann Santoro. Ann, thank you for taking the time to come on the show. Thank you, Marty. Uh, this is going to be a big election. A little bit about Ann. Um, she's currently the deputy first selectman, and she served in that role since 2021. Prior to that office, she served four years on the town's board of finance. She's worked with water and sewer, Town Building Committee. She was chairman, chairman of ARP, um, and she's presently working on the short-term rental committee, which we'll get into shortly. She's uh, been on the Public Safety Building Subcommittee. She's a, an attorney, currently not practicing. She, can, she served in uh, Milford, Greenwich. The Smithsonian contract, I, I gotta ask, what is the Smithsonian? So Smithsonian Institution in D.C. In, in D.C., okay. Right, and correct. Okay. Correct. Anne was born in Providence. She and her husband, uh, the doctor. Yes, Dr. Fred. Tremendous pediatrician that everybody Thank loves. You. Came to East Lyme uh, several years ago, 34 years ago, actually, and uh, currently living in town of East Lyme, which she is running for first selectman. They have two children. Graduates of the East Lime School System, mm -hmm. very successful, and I'm sure they're very proud of her. She, her. Her hobbies are she teaches and plays tennis. She likes to walk the dog and following developments at all levels of government. Thank you for coming on. And what would possess you to run for the position of first selectman in East Lime at this point in your life? Well, um, it seemed like a logical step. Um, both because there's an opening um, with Mr. Siri not running, and um, it seemed like a logical step from the position of deputy. And I've had that good experience being deputy to really uh, get a sense of uh, the responsibilities of the first selectman. And then as a select, uh, selectman, I've been able to uh, be ex officio to, to a number of um, boards and commissions. So I think I have a good handle on 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 being on how to uh, how the town runs and, and how to do that job efficiently. I have you know certainly my own ideas, but certainly I've seen seen it since 2017. I, six years worth of watching and being um, and participating. Uh, when I was on board of finance, I had wonderful exposure to how how a budget municipal budget is constructed, uh, and and um, and had oversight there uh, so I think it's just a logical step at this point point. and I see East Lyme as such a wonderful town and um, I just feel as though I have something to contribute I've so far I've always um, you know uh, taken a leadership role on wherever I was found myself um, and I feel I can I can do the same uh, in that position of first selectman well, first of all, I want to thank you for running, because Thanks, uh, and thank all the candidates for running, because it's very important. Mm -hmm. I gotta admit and apologize to you. I haven't been to a town meeting. Uh, I don't remember. Well, I do remember the last town meeting I went to. I mm -hmm. don't think you were around then. It was when uh, a former first selectman decided he was going to fire a policeman. Okay. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah, in the town of East Lyme. You're in the town of East Lyme. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And. Uh, that policeman ended up collecting uh, just under a million dollars because of stupidity on behalf of the selectmen and the board of selectmen for allowing it to go that far. That's the last I meeting see. that I've been to. Okay. I'm, 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 I, I love East Lyme. I love it more and more each day. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned, and because I okay. think we're ruining this town. Let's start out uh, with this project on I-95 uh, that uh, is ongoing, mm -hmm. which I will describe as an unmitigated disaster. 
what do you know about this? What, what are we trying to achieve with, with, with this huge project? Right. Well, first of all, it's, a, it's not an East Lyme project. It finds itself in East Lyme, but it is a state project. And the idea is to try to make that exit 74, uh, you know, entrance exit uh, safer. Mm. Um, and so um, this is something that we are pretty much mandated to do. Um, I will say this, um, it, and we, we've known it's coming, like, you know, we, we've been preparing and we've known it's coming, mm. but I've been, and it's not an easy project, but I was very impressed before the work began with all of the um, cooperation and collaboration between our emergency services departments, particularly our police, um, and the state officials from DOT running the project. Um, absolutely amazed at coordination. So there is, you can see the results of quite a bit of work so far. And, and living in town and going from my home, which is in the Flanders end of town, to Niantic frequently because of my meetings. Town Hall mm -hmm. is in the Niantic section of, for those that don't know, in, in that part of town. And back and forth and back and forth. I've been, I'll say, um, inconvenienced very little. And, I, and my hours are all crazy going down to town hall. It's not like I go every night. You know, it might be nights, middle of the day, morning meetings, whatever. So um, very, I, I'm impressed by that, that initial coordination and now seeing it play out, um, definitely uh, pleased with what I've been seeing. And even the blasting part of it, I thought, when I got wind of the blasting part, I thought, oh, help us here, <laughs> you know. But even that's been, with one little snafu the other day where there was a little bit of time difference between, you know, the, the warning and the actual blast, very precise. You can sign up. You can sign up for your, you know, for your warnings and so forth. You, the best place to go for information on this is our website because there's maps showing before and after with Exit but 74. But you, you answered... Uh, my question right in the beginning, it's all about safety yes. of exit 74. There's two yes. exits that are troublesome there. One is 74, yes. and I think, is the other one 75? Yes, But correct. anyway, correct. I, I go that way all, I live mm -hmm. in Flanders, yes. and I, I, I get on that uh, exit uh, quite frequently. Yes. And uh, I cannot believe that there wasn't a much simpler way to solve this problem other than what they're doing. They took property by eminent, valuable property. They took beautiful property and commandeered it. I, I'm usually wrong, Ann, about everything, and I'm probably <laughs> wrong about this, but I am very disappointed mm -hmm. I didn't get involved, and the townspeople didn't get involved to shoot this thing down because it's a waste of taxpayers' money as far as I'm concerned. But let's move on because sure. we want to spend too much sure. time right. on that. Uh, Again, I, I think, uh, Marty, taking a look at uh, the information on that website um, will give you a better visual of what's happening and probably, you know, answers some of your questions on that. Yeah, for you sure. You know, I, I, I've, I've never looked at it, but I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll have to try it. please do. So um, what direction in, I mean, you've been in the mix for quite some time. You yeah. like the action. You, 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 sure. you, you like politics. What, uh, what direction do you see East Lyme headed? Well, um, I think we've had a lot of positive developments in, my, in the last several years. And I think, you know, we're not a sleepy town anymore. I, I think when I first moved here, I felt there was a little sleepy quality to town. There weren't many restaurants to eat at. Um, and uh, it, was, it seemed had, it had a little more rural than suburban characteristic. Um, I, uh, but I do think... Um, going forward, I'd like to certainly maintain that unique quality of East Lyme um, because we have the, the woodlands, we've got the beaches. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a small town, but it's not so small. Um, but I'd like to maintain that homey um, quality to the, to the town, but at the same time addressing, you know, the economic concerns, um, development concerns. We have affordable housing issue. I'm sure we'll ch chat a bit about that. Um, you know, attracting solid businesses um, that are, you know, uh, to town, um, but really appropriate development, finding a nice balance. You, you, we really don't want to go to the path of overdevelopment. But are we there now? 
I don't think we are. Um, well, let's start uh, in, in that conversation yes. with Oswegatchie Hills. Bring us up to speed with what's going on there because okay. um, I don't know if I misread this, but mm -hmm. I, I thought I had read someplace that the town has spent nine million dollars defending its position on Oswegatchie. Is that possible? Well, and my God, what are we doing? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that total, but um, I don't have that number in my head or, or know that, to be honest with you here. So, but I can say this, um, certainly, I mean, there's a, what, about 450 acres to Oswegatchie Hill trails alone. Um, that lawsuit and the, and the legal wranglings have been going on for about 20 years. Um, I, I, th I think there is, you know, light at the end of that tunnel um, and and hopefully preservation is the way that pans out. Um, I'm a, a little bit reluctant sitting here today to, to tell you more than that because um, there have been recent conversations and negotiations. So um, I, I would like to just leave it at that, that legally there's, there's some good conversations happening, so there may be some developments coming that way. Um, similarly with the Hathaway property, um, but since, pretty much since I've been on board of Selectmen, we have been meeting in executive session trying to negotiate, uh, or discuss negotiations with that property. Again, light at the end of the tunnel on that, but um, because of the, the legal complexities and because when we are looking at property to purchase, um, it would be really improper for me to, and to, the to, to, to elaborate on that. But again, I think positive and not negative, the, that's all the, I'll say. The, I, want, I appreciate if you would get back to me on that nine million figure. Yes, uh, I, I, you've, 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 that. you've asked a very good question and I will find that yeah. out for you, yeah. So there are many people, and you know, as we get older, we look at, we look at things differently. I've always been pro-development. I'm, I'm for everything, mm -hmm. but now that I, that I just mm -hmm. see things different mm -hmm. and I think, I think we're ruining the town. Let's talk about downtown. There was recently uh, quite a uh, discussion on uh, the guy who bought the property next to the the hole in the wall there. That, yes, uh, the, cafe, three, the, the three, the cap, three poor cafe, poor cafe, cafe soul, soul. Out, of, out of business. Uh -huh. um, m many people went for that, and and mm -hmm. there was a great deal of resistance. But does the town have the power to control this? Um, development that's got a huge appetite in our, in our town? Well, I mean, to some extent through zoning, through zoning law, you certainly do. Um, but I, you know, and, and there isn't, a, there, there aren't like acres and acres of land, you know, zoned in such a way for, for, you know, let's say this development or that development. So, so I mean, just land wise, I don't see it happening. Well, look we're at, not mystic, you know, we're not mystic and, I, and, and look, we'll never look, become a mystic. Look at what they're putting behind the, the Trachis property. Uh, so that's in a very, that's in a very, very, uh, Maria, very, very early stage. And um, the only thing that's been approved is um, some, uh, is sewage capacity, much less than requested. So if you kind of do that math in your head, I think we do that in our heads. I don't think that, you know, that may, that, that, that development may end so up looking different. about the Pirello different. property up uh, Society Road there? Yeah, I, I can't speak, speak to that down. one. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, I can't speak to yeah. that. But back to the to the Ni that Niantic Main Street property. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, it, we're used to seeing certain things. But if you look at least, if you look at those buildings, those buildings need tremendous work. Those three buildings. So, uh, you know, altering that landscape a bit to me, and 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 um, seems it seems appropriate. Um, and I think the zoning commission, because I went to those. To, to certainly the, the last of the, the meeting where that was given approval, um, they were very pleased with the, with the look of the building and that it is not oversized, it's tasteful, it goes with the rest architecturally. We do have regulations in town on that for that Main Street area. So um, yeah, I, I think that one is, is probably gonna be a, a positive. If you're elected first, mm -hmm. do we say first select woman? So we still say, uh, for selectmen, because that's how it's done statutorily with our, by well, the state statute. I, how should I how, say? I you, you, you can. I mean, I'm I'm free to 
freelance on that and say uh, first select woman yeah, or something. Yeah, I would feel better describing you Probably. as Probably. Okay. Look like a woman to me. <laughs> okay, that's fine, and I don't take offense either well, way. You know, if you're elected first select mm -hmm. woman, these issues are going to be all at your desk. Yes. And, and you, yes. there's a great deal of responsibility yes. Yes. involved with this stuff. I, I'm glad you make that point because in my announcement speech, something I addressed, uh, I had four priorities. I mean, there's many priorities, but I kind of boiled things down. <laughs> For, for, because of time limitations, obviously, um, to four priorities. And one of the, the third priority, the first one was public safety, we can get back to that. Uh, second one was financial, we'll get back to that. The third one had to do with land use issues. One was development versus overdevelopment, you know, and then second was affordable, within this, it would be like 3B, um, affordable housing, um, and then, uh, um, short-term rentals. These what is are, affordable housing? Okay, so affordable housing is housing that uh, the, the state supports, uh, towns uh, through their zoning regulations, uh, you know, uh, make this possible, which is uh, basically, um, if you take a, a look at what um, someone making the median salary in your town, in our case, it's about 98000 Okay, okay. So if someone making, so 30% of that, you wouldn't want to spend more than 30% for your housing. So under 30, you know, it would be like under 30%. So the state enacted its famous uh, statute uh, some years back on uh, 830G on we, we should strive for that 10%. 10% of our housing units should be affordable. It becomes a bit of a chasing the dog's tail scenario because um, as you add units, even if some of, let's say you're billing a, a development, let's say what's going on on Bridebrook right now, right? Those summer regulars in a certain percentage are affordable. Okay, um, once you keep adding to the pot, you know, of housing and you do the math, uh, you're always sort of chasing that 10%. The 10% was sort of arbitrary and it unfortunately applies to every town and that may not be appropriate for every town. How's the affordable housing that we have working out? Well, I guess, I mean, uh, to my knowledge, okay. Uh, you know, uh, I, we, we are at about 6.7%. That's, I believe, what our, the state pins us at right now. Um, and we will be, you know, adding to that pot. So, um, there's, there's been a study, and that's a, something you may want to look at. There's been a study on affordable housing by our planning, uh, by way of our planning commission, uh, Gorman and York, I believe, were the, were the consultants, and that was state mandated. All, all towns um, had, to, had to come up with a, yet, you know, do, that, do a plan. So, um, and there's ways to increase it. Um, a, a sort of disappointment to me of that fe of that state statute is that it doesn't take into consideration housing that doesn't officially um, fit into the definition of um, affordable housing. And we have some of that housing stock in town, older homes that can be rented. You know, this is not only ownership, by the way; it's also rentals that can be rented for less than the going rate. Or homes. Well, who picks up the tab for the? <laughs> so so basically, um, basically you have it. Uh, the developers get breaks and also um, have a little bit easier set of regulations to abide Very by. Very complicated. Yes. Okay. But this needs. So back to my point about my announcement speech. I think this all needs. We need very thoughtful solutions going forward. East Lyme is a leader in Southeast Connecticut in affordable housing. So I'm proud of that but fact. But are you, are we making, uh, <laughs> are we making affordable housing unaffordable to, well, the, to those of us who are retired on fixed incomes? Okay. And is that a concern from, from, from Ann uh, Santoro? Well, well, I think, I think we all have this concern housing across the board is unaffordable. So it's almost like this statute is a little bit of an anachronism, if you will, a little bit dated, uh, because at every income level, except if you can really afford anything, let's say you're uber wealthy, at every, particularly middle class, people are struggling 
um, to afford housing, just like they're struggling. People are struggling to pay their electric bill. Exactly, you took the words out of my mouth. Uh, uh, with inflation. I could be your assistant. That's right. <laughs> with, um, with inflation the way it is, Mari, uh, you know, people, uh, again, food prices, fuel prices, electric prices, none of this They're has changed. Outrageous. And um, so housing, the housing problem is, it is very, very uh, difficult. Very, very difficult. And it's difficult at every level. Uh, and, it, and through every town and, uh, you know, in all states, it's a, it's a national issue. All right, it's let's really talk about uh, public safety, because we're not going to get yes. anywhere without bureaucracy. Let's talk about uh, public safety. You, sure. champion, you say you champion public safety. Yes. Uh, okay. T tell, me, tell me about public safety. Okay, so the reason for that is because, in, in my estimation, uh, and I think many would agree, um, it's the most important function of government. You don't think many would agree? <laughs> I would say most would agree, yeah. but people don't think that way. You know, they're thinking town government uh, picks, you know, town picks up my garbage or town provides water, but they're not thinking about that always, about that safety aspect um, or that, that it's the most important function. You really can't advance a community, a town without it. You really can't. Um, so our uh, uh, kudos to all of those departments that comprise our public safety. You know, that's dispatch, that's fire, that's police, uh, emergency management, in the case of natural and man-made disaster, um, and then we have um, animal control even. They do a great job. Um, I'm, I'm very proud of the work they've yeah, done. We, we've gone from a, from a good police department to a very professional police department, yes. haven't we? Yes, and, and, and the fire department is, is, is the same. Yes, and think about this. Um, you know, for many years when living here, we had that we didn't have an independent police department. You know, we had we had the um, the state trooper uh, system right here with an assistant or two, right? So, so this has been a great development and a great development that they have a home, they have an office in the public safety building. That is, it's so critical for their operations. In fact, um, maybe about a couple, let me, six weeks ago or so, um, Chief Mike was interviewed, I think the article was in the day paper, about tier two accreditation. You know, the state has a, you know, new accreditation requirements. And, and East Lime's first town in, in southeastern Connecticut that reached that tier two. Um, and did that like almost leapfrogged over over tier one. Um, lots of policies were reviewed, operations were reviewed, and we, we got that that nice little silver gold star, whatever you want to call it. And in the article, he attributed it to a number of things, but also mentioned that the um, the fact that they have their own offices and. It, it allows them to have you know, proper, like, proper setting for them, where they, they're not on that main, in that main street building, which was horrific, um, has really um, facilitated their operations. So two, that was good two, to know. Two questions with regard to that. Um, what's going to happen? What, uh, who owns that millstone, the old millstone building? So it, it is, it is mill, it, it, it's actually um, Dominion. Dominion owns that. Are they still yeah, own it? Yes, um, right. So, um, uh, so, um, that is something that we have discussed at a number of Board of Selectmen meetings. Um, there's a number of ideas out there. Um, I'm interested to hear where, you know, where we're at, we are with that. One thing we did do was um, we had, uh, there's a Yale Charette study going on, and those, there may be some suggestions that come through that way. But, um, you know, it, the question is, are we going to, uh, is that going to be developable property, you know, in the private sector, or will the town retain that for some purpose? And there's different differing views on that. I want to hear all of it. You know, I, I want to hear all of it because I think, like everything else, we have to be thoughtful with, about with what we're With regard to uh, the fire department, my friend Dave Hausman. I don't know if you know. I don't Dave. personally know him. Um, right. He tells me that uh, we don't have a fire chief. Who's running the fire department? And what's is that? In, Okay. Is it in that in fact uh, uh, correct? We don't have that structure. Um, we have a fire marshal whose duties. Didn't we have, ever have a fire chief? Um, I, not to my knowledge. Yeah. Going back, I mean, we've we've had that fire marshal structure and who's the fire. Who's in charge? So who's in charge is within which in, within Flanders and um, Niantic. You have fire chiefs 
um, for that for those sta for those stations. So shouldn't we have one? one so bulge? we are we are in discussions about that topic, um, and um, I personally think that's a good system to have a fire chief. Um, and then still have your your um, managers, if you will, at the stations, I, I, and uh, you know internally elected chiefs there. I think that's a that's a good solution. I think the time has come for that kind of thing because the fire marshal's duties are uh, pretty much dictated by state statute. And so, um, you, if you had a fire chief, you'd also have uh, a, a focal. Uh, you would have um, more uniform budgeting that happens. You know that, that person would take care of that department's budgeting. During your uh, tenure in, in the political arena, what do you consider to be your biggest accomplishments? What what have you been able to move move, move forward? forward. Yeah. Uh, well, um, if we start current well, with my current you know position on uh, board of selectmen, I would say um, dealing with the ARPA, the millions of dollars that we got. Um, from the federal government, from the American Rescue Plan, and devising a way to deal with that. Um, that was left up to it, the Board of Selectmen? Yes, left mm -hmm. up to the Board of Selectmen. And so what we decided to do, initially there was a little drip, drip, drip before the Syria administration. There was, you know, okay, Board of Selectmen would be asked for, you know, funding on, for a certain project, and then, you know, there was a bit of a drip on that. And then the, the feeling was, okay, you need a process. You, you know, if once we start really spending this money, we need a process. And this was not unique to East Lyme. Every single town, city, throughout the state, throughout other states, struggled with this because what happened was um, uh, you had many, many rules and regulations under the ARPA program for use of this money, but not a blueprint. How do you do this? You know, you have to make up a form uh, and, and um, you know, distribute it to businesses or to nonprofits or ask your department heads, tell me the most important project that you have on your table in front of you, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, I'm very proud of that work. I was given um, an eight week deadline um, because we were trying to make, to, trying to widget it all w with our budget at the time, the budget process so that we would know these projects on the town side are taken care of by ARPA money. So, um, and it was very early in my, my Board of Selectmen career. It was literally out of the gate, took, took office uh, in December, and then in January, you know, we had a, we had a nice committee of eight people, um, myself and, and uh, Ann Cachella, who is a select woman, a select man as well, and, um, and others, for, and we had a number of individuals from the community. And we had to devise a system. So um, again, nothing was written. So I was fortunate at a meeting to meet the, the first selectman of um, East Windsor. And he had gone through the process, one of the only that had, and I, I talked to him, I got his documents, we had back and forth, and that was tremendously helpful. It saved probably a month's worth of work. Uh, and of course, we modified for our own purposes. But we, we basically distributed money, not only to town departments, but to nonprofits. Uh, we thought that best way to reach as many people as possible. So I'm proud of that work. Um, I wasn't the you big- You got any money left? We have a little bit left, but not get... much. <laughs> I know a lot of people. <laughs> I know, I know. It's very, you know, this good, I mean, Good and bad to all of the, that's a whole, that's a federal question about ARPA, but uh, we, we handled it, I thought, very well. If you're elected, what do you consider your biggest challenge uh, in the next couple of years? I think it's budgetary. I think um, that, and I, this was a point I made in my announcement speech, um, that um, it's going to be more important than ever to find additional revenue and to find efficiencies of operation. Uh, we have an $86 million budget this, this year for 23-24. Um, it's about a 7% increase. Um, mill rate went up about one point, a one, little bit over one. Um, um, I find, you know, I, and I that, feel well, like- that, that, that sounds 
good, but what happens when the revaluation comes in? And well, we just had that reval. We, we, we are now in the shadow of the revaluation, we, you know, a couple of years worth now. So, um, yeah, that's uh, our mill rate, 20, maybe 24.88. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I, I think... Do you think that system works well? The system the re of? The reval system it was related to... I mean, it's all about collecting money. Yes, right? you have to do it periodically, and that's what we do. And it's also a cost to the town. We have to bond for that, that service. That service costs a lot of money. Over a period of time, we bond for that. We're, so We're running out of time here, so I, okay. I, don't, mean, I don't mean to be... No, that's fine. I don't fine. mean to be... Yeah. A, um, Go ahead. What, are, what do you think about uh, the water and sewer capacity situation and problems as... We have any East Lime, uh... right? So um, I've been listening. I've, I am ex officio. Uh, Kevin Siri is the chair of that Water and Sewer Commission. I'm ex officio to the commission, so I attend their meetings. And yes, this is a this is an issue. We've just um, established a subcommittee within um, the uh, Water and Sewer Commission to um, to act, examine this very closely know where our pots to determine where our possibilities are for expanding our capacity. Um, it may just sort of naturally happen over time, uh, but we definitely have to have to examine that. Um, yeah, we, ha we've, we have a lot of assigned capacity, but not being used capacity, so a little complicated. But I'm looking forward to seeing the research and seeing what this commission comes up with for suggestion. We, you know, the state could give us more capacity. That's not, that could eventually happen. It can't happen right away because of the current agreement. The election is less than three months. Correct, away. correct. We just, had, right, just um, November 7th. How, what is your, how are you, what's your campaign strategy? How, how, how are you going to get people to, to get out there and vote? I mean, yeah. uh, voter apathy is our biggest enemy. Yes. And low voter turnout seems to be the, mm -hmm. the case uh, in yeah. every election these days. What, what's, your, what's your plan? Well, I mean, um, I've been through uh, two other elections and so uh, successfully, and uh, this one to me isn't a whole lot different. Are you going door to door? Or uh, what we you? do, we do door to door. Well, you got to um, be in shape. To... That's fine. Well, the tennis helps with yeah. that, right? I, yeah, that, that's never been a knock on whatever, not, not, not been a problem. So, um, uh, yeah, definitely um, looking forward to all that. Um, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, it'll be very person to person. That's what do most people say, Ann? Yeah. Uh, not, not your biggest supporters, but the, the average Joe six pack. Uh, the average what, person. What, what do they think? Of? I think they're always concerned um, about um, how the town spends its money. Um, they're worried about their tax bill. Um, those are the concerns. I think finding, especially now, uh, with what we're under, yeah. with uh, our economy, our national economy, uh, our state economy, and uh, you know what, and how that's put downward pressure on everyone. And it th for the foreseeable future, certainly through this election cycle, through a first term, we're going to be living with it. We haven't we haven't seen the end of all that. You know. Um, Will there be any debates? Yes, I imagine I mean, there's at least I mean one debate. I real debates, not, yeah. not, <laughs> not what we use, like real debates from the... Sure. So, um, yeah, I think, um, I think there will definitely be at least one debate. I look forward to that. I think that's, that'll be fabulous. Are you and uh, uh, Cunningham on good terms? Oh, yes. I mean, we... Is there anything we can do to... Is there anything we can do to... <laughs> to to, to rough it up? <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, Dan and I have gotten along well yeah. on, uh, you know, uh, on board of selectmen. And uh, even when I was on finance, I served with him on a purchasing policy. I recall serving with him on that. Um, but uh, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I mean, we have different styles, um, you know, and, uh, and and you know, being a Democrat versus being a Republican, I think your principles uh, can be different. And this is completely separate and apart from any craziness you see on the national stage. I think there's just a different way of approaching problem solving. Um, one thing I would point out is, um, if you have a minute, if you can go to the eastlinerepublicans.org website, um, because there are, um, our, our principles are, are laid out. Um, and truth be told, I authored those, <laughs> I authored that text. So 
Um, but I did a lot of thinking about um, what those principles are and how they translate at the local level. So I think that may give you a good idea of how I view things, if you, if you look at that. Anything else that you want to uh, no, I'm say just, before we close out? Well, in? thanks so much for having me. And, will you uh, come back on again? Oh, of course. Yeah. I will be delighted to come back again. Right. It's great chatting with yeah. you. Well, thank you for coming yes, on. Yes, thank Anderson you. Anderson Toro, thank candidate you. for first selectman, look, first select woman, town of East Lyme. She certainly deserves your uh, consideration. Thank you. Thanks for watching tonight. And uh, Murray, I signing off from the city. Too tough to die. Good morning.